having an amazing day and an amazing week and I hope everything is going swell. It's been a couple weeks since I've uploaded last on this channel. I've actually been working a lot on my vlog channel and also, if you guys didn't know, if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, the Avenator community has officially donated over a thousand dollars to aiding and fixing and nursing the coral reefs in the Great Barrier Reef back to health. I have over 20 coral polyps growing in the Great Barrier Reef right now and they're growing and they're gonna become full-blown coral reefs. Head on over to my vlog channel if you wanna learn more about that. For now though, we sit here today to tell a story. This story has been a story time that I've been holding on to been holding on to for quite a while. This story is about a girl that I was friends with for many, many years that chose to use me in multiple different ways. I allowed to use me. I stopped talking to this person many years ago. I was a freshman in high school all the way until I was like a senior in college. I didn't even realize honestly how much I was like manipulated this entire time in my life until I told people how crazy this story was. And they told me, they were like, Ava, why did you stay friends with this person for so long? I don't understand why I stayed. I'm gonna tell you all the details. So put your seatbelts on. Give this video a big thumbs up if you like my story times. And if you wanna watch any of my other story times, you can find the playlist in the links down below. I feel like a lot of you guys are gonna relate to this. This happens to the best of us. This happens to everyone. And honestly, you're probably that crazy person in someone else's life. So at the end of the day, I don't judge this person. No bad vibes. I feel like people that do really bad things to you have way more going on in their own lives. You can learn from this story to not take it personally. Everyone is hurting and everyone is hurting other people as a result of their own hurting. So bless. And yeah, let's get into this video. I don't even really know how to begin this story because this story starts back when I was like freshman in high school. I used to be friends with these two girls in high school and like for protecting their names, we're gonna call them Taylor and Carrie. Carrie is like the bulk of this video, okay? A little backstory on Carrie. Taylor actually attended my high school and so that's kind of how I knew her. But Carrie didn't go to our school. She actually lived like really far away, like 45 minutes away from my school in my city. She wasn't really friends with her friends at her school. Well, foreshadowing, she would always attend every single football game. She would try to attend homecoming, dance, prom, anything she could to like get to my school and to hang out with friends that went to my school. My parents didn't really take a liking to her. You know when parents like say they don't like one of your friends, they usually know best. And it was one of those situations where my parents were kind of like iffy on her. And I was like, you just don't like my friends. You know, like she's kind of weird, but like she's cool. And my parents were just like, no. Alas, I didn't listen to my parents and I kept hanging out with her. I was kind of like being prompted by a lot of people that I wasn't hanging out with like the right crowd, if you will. Like people that were like a little bit just like sketchy. I just always thought, you know, like people are just judgy. Stop judging my best friends. Like I'm good. The situation that led me to ultimately stop talking to them was I remember there was this one moment and we were kayaking and Taylor was like dating this guy at the time. Mind you, we're all 14 years old, okay? And she was like, oh my gosh, guys, my boyfriend wrote me a song. And I was like, no way, that's so cool. And Carrie was like, that's so cool. Like, can we hear it? Oh yeah, like here's the song. Like, oh my gosh, he wrote this for me. So we're all stoked like, yes girl, your 14 year old boyfriend is a song writer. She shows us the song lyrics. And quickly I realized these are the song lyrics to This Is True by Ryan Cabrera. And I'm looking at these song lyrics and I'm like, Taylor. You know, I didn't know how to break it to her because she was like really stoked that her boyfriend wrote her a song. And here I was like 14 years old being like, I literally have this song on my iPod touch. She really like thinks this is a moment. Like she's proud. So I took a deep breath and I was just like, Hey Taylor, I think these are the lyrics to a song that I know. And she's like, oh my gosh, like, what do you mean? What do you mean a song that I know? Like, what, what do you, what do you even mean? So she goes on her phone and searches the lyrics, This Is True by Ryan Cabrera. Sure enough, they match identically to the song that she was sent by her boyfriend. So then she starts freaking out, texting her boyfriend, and she's like, listen, what's going on? This 14 year old little pimp kid texts her back and is like, oh yeah, my dad is a famous songwriter and he allowed me to like shadow write a song for Ryan Cabrera. So like, that's my song, which is not true, okay? Like maybe it could be true in some parallel universe, but like in this situation, it was not true, okay? We did all the research, it's not true. Taylor was so like humiliated in that moment because she really was embarrassed that like, it was not a song written by her boyfriend that she fought to the death. He said this, his dad is a songwriter, he's famous, this is the song, I don't know like what you're talking about, he wrote the song. And I was just sitting there like, 
So after that situation, I kind of was just like, yeah, this is, no, not my people, not my people. I basically stopped talking to Taylor. Carrie, I kind of like drifted apart from and kind of got some other friends and joined some sports and kind of like drifted away from that kind of crowd. Kind of how like I stopped being best friends with them. Fast forward to freshman year of college, okay? I'm a little freshman, I have my YouTube channel. You know, I was living large. I was living in my little three bedroom loft in Orange County. I had college friends. I had just started hanging out with Elaine. You know, life was on the ups, life was good. Carrie decided to attend an out of state school. So she went to school really, really far away. I was finally free from like her always trying to hang out with me and like always trying to like just be in my friend group and my space. Winter break came along. Sure enough, Carrie started hitting me up on Facebook and she was like, I'm coming home for winter break, let's hang out. I haven't seen you in months. We need to hang out with each other. And me being the nice person that I am, I'm like, yes, girl. It's been so long, sure. So when Carrie asked me if I wanted to hang out and she was gonna like drive to LA, since we lived in Orange County, I thought it'd be super fun cause I'd never been to LA really like with a friend before. While we're out in LA, she's like, Ava, oh my gosh, you know what you should do is throw a New Year's party. It would be lit. I'm not one to like throw parties. I don't throw parties, but she kind of like peer pressured me and was like, Ava, you have this like giant loft house now. You can throw parties. You're not in an apartment. Your neighbors won't care. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe, but honestly, I was leaning more towards like, no, I was just like, I need to get out of this. I need to just like give her what she wants. Say maybe, of course, obviously never throw a party, okay? She's just like, we will get music. I make shots. awesome We're playlists. Gonna We're gonna have like jello she's... shots. We're gonna have an invite list. Like she's listing all these things and she's kind of becoming this like party planner for me. I'm freaking out. I've never thrown a party before. I'm like very stressed. Within the following next few days, I get a Pinterest invite from Carrie. I got invites from a Spotify playlist called Called, like Carrie's New Year's jams. And I'm like, you know, this is all fun and games. Like what if we did have a New Year's party? We're not actually gonna have one, but like Carrie's really starting to scare me. Cause she's like making all of these like Pinterest boards and stuff like for this event. But I'm thinking like, there's no way this is gonna happen. Like she's gonna see that I'm not interested in it and forget about it tomorrow. <laughs> Next morning I wake up and I wake up to a bunch of texts from my best friends, my, my best friends saying, Ava, why aren't you attending your own party? Bish what? I'm getting texts from my friends being like, Ava, you need to like click that you're going. It's your party and you're not even RSVP. I go on Facebook and I see Carrie has started an event. Ava's New Year's party. Yep. Like 46 people that are invited. People are saying that they're going. My address is on here. And the event is created by Carrie. Not me, by Carrie. As I'm like reading all of this, I get a notification from Carrie and she's like, oh my gosh, girl, like this party's gonna be so lit. RSVP, if you RSVP, everyone's gonna come. Like Ava, you need to RSVP to your party. Me and my dumb ass is like, you know what? I do need to RSVP to my party. In that moment, I was like, this is effed. Like this is not okay. But people were already RSVPing and it was too late to back out in my eyes. Within the next couple weeks, we started planning this party and I'm letting Carrie do all of the work with like the jello shots and the decor, Pinterest boards and the music and all of that. I'm basically just like funneling her money to buy like supplies for all of this. Harry was coming to my house quite a bit to plan this whole New Year's party. One of the times that she was at my house, she was like, hey, I don't know if you remember Taylor from high school, but her and her boyfriend actually broke up. Carrie tells me that they were engaged with each other. They were gonna get married. She'd moved out to his state for him, this boyfriend that she was dating since she was like in high school. So she's like, hey, you know, she doesn't have friends that live in this city anymore. She's pretty bummed. She just got this job. She gets off work in 10 minutes. Can she come over? And I'm like, absolutely. Of course she can come over. It's time to restart the friendship. High school was so long ago. I'm sure she's a different, better person. So we hung out that night. Everything was perfectly fine. We had a good time together. Life was great. So for the New Year's party, I invited a couple girlfriends to my house to get ready for the party. You know, like get dressed in my bathroom, do our makeup together, like have a little girls night before the party, you know? So I invited two of my best friends, like literally my best high school and college friends, um, Macy, who you guys know, my friend Sarah came, Elaine was there. And then I think it was just Carrie and Taylor. So it was like all these girls in my bathroom getting ready, bumping music. We were having so much fun before the New Year's party. And I was actually really happy that I ended up having the party. In this moment, I was like, you know what? Tonight's gonna be a great night. Tons of my friends are coming, a ton of people that I don't know are gonna come to my house, but like, it's gonna be fine, you know, it's gonna be a good party. So, where did things go downhill? Well, 
right about now. The party starts and Taylor is nowhere to be found. She didn't get ready with all the girls. So Carrie comes up to me and she's like, hey, Taylor's still working. Her shift gets off at nine. Is it okay if she uses your upstairs bathroom in your master bedroom to get ready before the party like starts? Of course she can use my bathroom. I'm a hospitable person. Go right ahead. I've always heard horror stories of people like stealing stuff at parties. And since there were a lot of people that I didn't know that were gonna be at my house, I took the liberty to like obviously make sure everything that I cared about was stowed away. All my filming and camera stuff obviously was like tucked away in my office and locked. Other than that, I like left pretty much like all my home decor out as usual. I didn't really think I had any breakable items like, you know, like vases or anything hanging around the house. When I was in my bathroom after I did my makeup, I specifically remember I did my makeup, all my friends were in the bathroom. I zipped my makeup bag and I was about to put it in my bathroom drawer, like, you know, underneath the sink. And I was like, you know what, Ava? Why don't you put it underneath the sink. Why don't you hide your makeup a little bit? Cause I did have like some expensive products in there. And I don't know, something told me that I needed to put this underneath my sink by the pipes. So that's what I did. Go about the party as usual. And the party was fun. It was a good party. Pretty early on to when the party started, Carrie comes up to me and Taylor and they're holding my cat ears. So literally like maybe, I don't even know, maybe like a week before the party, I'd ordered two pairs of cat ears from like this Taylor Swift concert website merch thing. They were these to be exact. So these cat ears were like 24, 29 bucks a piece. Piece, and I was really excited about them. Yeah, I hadn't even gone to wear them yet. And Carrie and Taylor come downstairs and they're holding both pairs and they're like, are we okay to wear these during the party? They're so cute. Can we please wear them? We just really wanna wear these during the party. I mean, I'm surrounded by all these people at my party and I didn't know how to say, no, actually those mean a lot to me. You can't wear those cat ears. So me being an idiot, I'm like, Sure, you can wear the cat ears, just don't break them. All I said, just don't break them. That is all I asked. And they're like, girl, thanks, we're not gonna break them. As the night progresses, Taylor starts like making out with multiple guys all over my couch, which is like a whole other thing. She gets really, really drunk and messy. And I had this like glass coffee table, throws her heel, breaks the glass coffee table. She got in a fight. Basically she was making out with multiple guys in my house and they tried to fight each other outside my house. And it was just a mess. Then she went and made out with the other guy outside my house because he got kicked out after fighting. Everything that could have possibly gone wrong at a house party, like, went wrong. The only thing that didn't happen was the cops didn't show up, which they probably should have. It's now like one in the morning, I'm tired. People are still in my house partying like crazy, but I'm freaking tired. My good guy friend was just being really, really sweet that night and just came up to me and was like, look, I know you're really tired. Why don't you go to sleep? I'll take care of the party. We'll clean everything in the morning. I was so good on him to do that. A good friend. So I was like, yeah, like, thank you so much. Like that's so nice. That was like so nice of him, honestly. Like if you're watching this. So I wake up in the morning, it's like eight in the morning and all the girls that I had get ready in my house, I told them that they could spend the night. So they slept in like guest bedrooms and like the couch and stuff like that. So everyone Everyone wakes up, I go downstairs. I notice that like my house is pretty clean. My guy friend, I guess after the party was over last night had cleaned up as much as he could before everyone went to bed. This guy is literally a blessing. Ladies, he's not single, he's married now. So he was already awake, like sweeping downstairs. So I was just feeling like really thankful for my friends at this time. Party last night was wild, but at least I have friends that have my back and life goes on and it was a good time. After we cleaned downstairs, all the girls went up to my room and we just like laid in my bed and talked about how fun last night was. We took funny pictures together of all of us and how crazy we looked the next morning after the New Year's party. And we were all just laying in my bed, like me and like five other girls. And I was just like, you know what guys? I love all of you guys so much. Everyone get dressed. We're going to IHOP for pancakes. So everyone's excited. And I go into my bathroom to like put makeup on and get ready for the day. I go into my bathroom. I look underneath my sink and my whole makeup bag is gone. So I start like looking everywhere. I'm looking, checking every single drawer. I'm like, where the heck is this makeup? I don't understand. I know I put it right there. My photographic memory sees myself putting it in by the pipes and it's not there. All the girls rush into my bathroom and start searching with me. We're searching everything from like, like places that don't even make sense. After we discovered that it was definitely not in any square inch of my bathroom, we're checking underneath my bed, we're checking even downstairs in the downstairs guest bedroom. We literally checked my entire house probably three times top to bottom. We just didn't want to accept the fact that my stuff was stolen. Um, so we checked everywhere. Cause we were like, you know what? Last night got crazy. What if someone was like drunk and wanted to do their makeup and took your makeup and left it in like a closet somewhere, you know? Under good faith that maybe someone put my makeup somewhere else and like forgot to put it Back. After searching the house three times, we realized that my makeup was definitely 
gone and definitely stolen. And I was pretty sad about it because I had never gotten something stolen from my own house, at least underneath my knowledge. And the fact that I had this party and that was the one thing I knew I did not want to happen, happened. And the fact that it happened in my bedroom when the party was all downstairs, like literally no one was even up by my bedroom except for one person. It was hard. It was a hard thing to face. Then everyone sits there and like everyone kind of knows that like we're not really going to IHOP anymore because we've spent an hour and a half searching my house. Everyone was all hands on deck searching. And um, the only person that wasn't searching as hard as everyone else or basically at all, my good old friend, Carrie. We get to the point in our life where we're just like, okay, who stole it? Who could it have been? Like the only girls that were at the house was like my core friend group, maybe like two or three girls that were plus ones, but they stayed downstairs. Everyone's going through, everyone's like, I didn't steal it, I didn't steal it. Like obviously every everyone there is gonna say that they didn't steal it. And so we're thinking like, okay, well who is in here that was here last night? And the only person that wasn't there when we woke up in the morning that slept over was Taylor. So then we're like, well, let's call up Taylor and see if she took the makeup. Like. Let's call her up. Maybe she like took it accidentally when she got ready in the bathroom. Like maybe she has it and it's all a big misunderstanding. Also, we're wondering, we're like, where is Taylor? Cause it's pretty early in the morning. It's like eight in the morning. Carrie goes, oh, Taylor had to leave at 6 a.m. to get ready for work. So Taylor is the only girl that slept over but dipped out before everyone woke up which is a little shady, but I guess if she was working at Walmart and it opened at seven, then sure. For this part of the story, I just wanna let you guys know she actually didn't work at Walmart. She worked at a place, another store that's like a Walmart competitor that definitely does not open at 7 a.m. So that might affect things, but we're just gonna say she works at Walmart. So we're like, okay, well, we can't get a hold of her. So I tell Carrie, I'm like, can you please text Taylor and just see if she has my makeup and see what the heck's going on with that. She goes, oh, Taylor would never steal anything. Taylor understands the value of money and she won't steal anything because she's not like that. She's not a thief, so she didn't steal it. And just starts getting like real defensive about it. Two of my friends actually ended up going to the mall and buying me some of the products that I got stolen which was really, really nice of them because I mean, we were all college students. So like we didn't have money, you know, for like Sephora products. And the fact that they went and bought me just like a couple products that I lost, like that really meant a lot. So I knew that they didn't steal it because like they wouldn't have done that if they stole it. I had taken this whole morning to kind of like process. Then I go downstairs. I realized that Taylor has broken my coffee table. Taylor and Carrie broke my cat ears. The ear part was like cracked off of both of them. I don't even know how you break cat ears. And now my stuff's stolen. I'm just like, this is just a total mess. So I tell Carrie, I'm like, hey, my coffee table's broken and my cat ears are broken. Carrie's just denying everything. She's like, like literally the worst liar on the planet this person is. Carrie goes, oh my gosh, the cat ears are broken? How did that even happen? I don't understand. I don't know how the cat ears got broken, Ava. We put them away. As soon as we were done wearing them, we put them away. So anything that happened after that, we don't know. And I found my cat ears like on my fireplace mantle. So first of all, I'm just like, if you put them away, why would you put them on top of a fireplace mantle in the middle of the party? Like, I don't understand how that indicates putting them away, but whatever. But I'm thinking like, okay, you know what? Maybe she didn't break them. Maybe they did put them away on the fireplace mantle and then someone else broke them. Like I tell my guy friend later that day that's helping me clean. I'm like, yeah, you know, like, I don't know, my cat ears got broken, but Carrie said that she didn't break them. He looks at me with like the most like dumbfounded face. And he's like, Ava, after you went to bed last night, Carrie and Taylor were drunk as hell, walked up to me both with the broken cat ears in their hands. And they said, what do we do? We broke the cat ears. We don't want to tell Ava. So then I'm hearing this information and I'm like, okay, this is my first step to knowing that like, I should not have trusted these people again in my life, but I did. And now look what's happening. My whole life is turning to drama and noodles. This is bad. This is very bad. Shouldn't have gotten myself into this mess, but I did. Get a text message from Carrie about an hour after everyone leaves my house. This woman has the audacity to text me after all she knows I've been through that morning. Tears, after the searching, after the mood swings. Carrie texts me and goes, hey Ava, last night brought over a roll of toilet paper and a bottle of Fireball, and she needs to be reimbursed for those things. So if you could send her $20, that would be great. First of all, a roll of toilet paper is like $2. $2 max for one roll. A bottle of Fireball? Like a small bottle of Fireball, of which I did not drink any of. So I'm just like, what makes you think Fireball is $13.97 and with inflation, it was probably cheaper back then. It probably ended up to being like $16 that she spent. She's saying, oh, just give her a 20, like as if I need to pay a freaking like interest rate on this. Sh I look at this text and I'm like, 
you break a $500 coffee table, $50 worth of cat ears, my stuff's been stolen out of my house, and you get in fights outside my house, and you ask me for $20? I, I don't even, honestly, I don't even think I texted her back. I think my friend Sarah texted her and was kind of like, hey, like, are you stupid? Like, why are you, what? What? And then they dropped it. But like, just to just to think that someone had the audacity to like text me that after knowing they like dipped out of my house before everyone was awake to see all the stuff that they broke and then ask for money. I'm just like, I don't even understand who would do that. But anyway, that's what happened. So the next day on January 2nd, I had to fly to New York to shoot a show with Vivo that I was producing at the time, which you guys know, do it yourself -y. So I went to New York and I needed someone to house sit my cat and also just my house. I didn't have anyone to house sit for me. I didn't know where to find someone. So I posted on Facebook. I was like, hey, can anyone please like house sit for me for just three days? Um, I'm gonna be in New York. All you have to do is just like feed my cat, hang out with her for a little bit, like that's it. Carrie sees my Facebook post and she's just like, I will do it. I will watch your cat. She was like really eager to just like be in my house and like I was saying in my Facebook post, I was like, I'll pay you. So my house was two stories. It had a bottom floor that was all hardwood, a staircase that was hardwood, and then it had a loft that was carpet, and then my bedroom was also carpet. I had a problem with Paris like peeing all over my loft area because she would walk up the stairs and like use the carpet as like a litter box, like a just giant litter box. So before I left for New York, I made this whole barricade where at the top of the staircase, I put suitcases and like clothing racks. I just like really built up a whole like fortress. So she couldn't go and pee in my loft and poop in the loft. Cause I just didn't want to clean that up and deal with that when I got home. Cause it smelled so bad. When Carrie was coming over to watch my cat, I literally just told her two rules. Just don't go up into my bedroom. Don't go upstairs. There's no need to because Paris will poop and pee up there. And like, that's the one thing that I want to avoid. Anything and more that she needs is downstairs. She's like, I got you. Don't even worry. We're good. We are Gucci down to the socks. I'm like, cool. Here's the key to my house. First day I'm in New York, 3,500 miles away. I go on Snapchat and I click on Carrie's Snapchat story and it's 200 seconds and I click on it and it's Carrie laying in my bed with Paris, petting her, stroking her butt cheeks and her tail. First of all, I locked my bedroom door from the outside. So like she had to credit card her way into my bedroom and bust down the fortress that I built on the staircase. And she sends like some of the Snapchats to me too. So I click on them and I respond and I'm like, why are you in my room? What the hell are you doing there? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, cool. You seem like you're enjoying yourself. Just lock my bedroom door when you're done. My dumb, 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 dumb self. That's all I said, all I said to her was just close the door. You got it, girl, like, of course. Also, a day later, I go on Snapchat and I see a Snapchat of Taylor and Carrie at a local house party that was really close to my house. So I see the Snapchat and my FBI brain starts churning, okay? They live 45 minutes away. What are they doing at a party that's like literally five minutes away from my house? I just, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I had this like slight conspiracy that maybe they used my house to like hang out and get ready that night. I don't know. That was my first instinct. That was what my body told me was happening. But of course I had no proof. So I just backtracked and I said, just forget about it. You're crazy, Ava. Just don't think about it. I get home from New York, okay? I start walking up the stairs and immediately I see that my barricade for Paris is not there. And my heart sinks. Cause I'm like, I know, I know what is up there in that loft space. I know there's poop everywhere. My bedroom door is wide open and I can see poop. I can see poop from the staircase on my bed. There's three poops on the floor. There's pee all over the loft, which leads me to believe that my door had been open since the day that I left when she came. I'm so disappointed at this point. I'm just like, I don't understand. I give you one job, you break it. I give you another, you break it. The night that I got back was Carrie's last day before leaving back to school. She was having this going away party in LA at like the Staples Center, like some restaurant down there. And I had already agreed to go with her. So I get home from the airport that night. I'm just like, you know what? I still have to go to this dinner. I'm just gonna go, whatever. I go into my bathroom to get ready for this dinner. I open my makeup drawer and all of my missing makeup is on top, scattered around. I see this and I'm just like, I don't even, I don't, <laughs> what? So I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna stay chill. I'm gonna go to this dinner. I'm gonna try to see these people and then I'm never gonna talk to them again. So I go to this dinner in LA. Everyone's having a grand old time. They get into this conversation about this party that they went to that weekend. And I'm thinking like, oh crap, maybe this is the party that like I saw on their Snapchat. Taylor blurts out in the midst of like, they're all talking. And then all of a sudden Taylor goes, oh yeah, like when we got ready at Ava's house, just as I suspected. So if you use my bathroom to get ready, Taylor was there. Maybe just maybe you two put back the makeup products. 
when you guys were in my bathroom. And I'm hearing this and I'm just sitting there like, I know what happened. I leave the dinner, I'm just like triggered, shook, I don't know what to do. So I go home and I'm just like, listen, I'm gonna avoid all confrontation. She leaves like in two days back to wherever she goes to school in another random state. Two more days, Ava, and you're in the clear and you can phase out Carrie. Right after that, I had to fly to Hawaii to shoot this like Sperry video that I did a while ago. It had been two weeks since I'd fully like settled into my house. I think my mom ended up watching Paris, that was good. I get home from my two trips. It has now been two weeks since New Year's Day and I always sleep on my right side of my bed. But this one night, this one night, I just kind of, I don't know. I was feeling like maybe I should try out the left side. Maybe I should see how the left side feels. I don't even know. So I sleep on the left side of my bed, which I literally never, ever, ever do. I wake up in the morning and just as if you would wake up on your right side and you'd flip the right side of the sheets over to the left, I flip the left side of the sheet over to the right. And I notice right on my pillow and right like underneath the pillow is this big ass, weird ass stain, this like circular stain. I was like texting Carrie. She was like, oh yeah, how's like school been? I'm back, blah, blah, blah. So I'm having this conversation with her talking about nothing. So I text her and I'm like, Oh my gosh, and I just noticed the stain in my bed. She's like, oh my gosh, like let me see it. So I take a picture of the stain and I send it back to her. Mind you, this is like a big stain. Like the stain is like, like that big. She texts me back after she sees this photo and she's like, oh my gosh, that's probably makeup. And I'm like, do you think I'm dumb? I don't sleep in makeup, it's not makeup. And then she goes, oh well, it's probably a spray tan. Do you see my skin? I don't need a spray tan. I don't get spray tans. So then I start to do a little digging. This may be a little uh, trigger warning, disgusting, but I walk right up to this stain and the stain is so disgusting. <laughs> Maya's like, what the? I'm scared of what you're gonna say. Did you, you, knew, you know the story, right? No. You don't know this story? Not this one. I walk up to the stain, I look at it, and it's literally like brown and green and red. And I look at it and I'm like, this looks like, this looks like like a period. I literally smell it. No, you don't. Yes, I bet to see what it was. Yeah. I bent down and I smelt it and I was like, oh my God. Someone literally bled all over my bed in a circle. And then it like, you know, like it like spread. And then it was turning like green and brown. I was sleeping on top of it. So I'm like, what the? F so I text Carrie and I'm like, oh my God, it's period blood. And this, <laughs> excuse me. She texts me back and she goes, oh my God, I saw that on New Year's and I didn't want to say anything to you. First of all, if you saw it on New Year's, that was fresh, okay? That was fresh blood. Second of all, you didn't want to tell me, but when I show you the stain that you saw two weeks ago and it's in the same spot that you saw two weeks ago, why would you say, oh, it's a spray tan, oh, it's makeup, if you knew what it was when you saw it when you saw it? So I'm just like, what psychopath am I dealing with? What the hell? If it wasn't you that did that, you would have no excuse to lie. Like if it were, if it were me, if I did see that on New Year's and I just forgot to tell my good friend two weeks later and she sent me a picture of it, I would be like, damn girl, like, holy crap. I forgot to tell you like, ha 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 ha. Like, <laughs> Cause I'm thinking like, I definitely didn't do this because I haven't been on my period in this two week span. It was a weird spot where the stain was because it was like by the pillow, like by your head. So it clearly wasn't anyone that was like sleeping in the bed because your period doesn't come out of your freaking ear. So then I started to think back, I started to backtrack and I'm like, when were the last times that people were in my bed? Because I was out of town for like close to two weeks. I remember on New Year's day, when everyone got into my room to like talk about the night and we took pictures and we were like planning on getting IHOP, Harry came into my room and she sat on my pillow right there. Everyone was laying in the bed and because there was kind of like minimal room, she went around and like that was where she sat kind of like crisscross applesauce while everyone was talking. So I started to piece everything together and I was like, oh my gosh, it was Carrie all along. This was her, this makes sense now. I don't know why she didn't just tell me that. If she would have just said, yeah, like I literally have my period in your bed and I was like embarrassed to tell you, like I'm sorry. Like I, I couldn't get mad at that, you know? Like she's telling the truth, that's fine. That's, that's nature, that's what happens. But no, she like tried to make me think it was 40 other things. That that's when I texted my friend Sarah from college and Sarah was like, you need to bring it up to her. You need to say something. And I'm like, no, you know, like, let me just, you know, kick back, like pretend like it never happened. And she's like, no, 
You have to say something. I go to my bathroom and I take a picture of the stolen makeup. I send the picture to Carrie and I say, do you know what this is? Carrie responds and says, oh no, I've never heard of that product before, but I've just looked it up on Sephora.com and it has great reviews. What do you think about it? She literally tries to act like I'm asking like for a product review for her. So then I text her back and I'm like, these were the stolen makeup products from my house. She goes, oh my gosh, how did you find those? Where did you find them at? And I'm like, I found them in my makeup drawer right underneath all my other makeup. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Like, how did we miss that? That's so weird. I'm just like, girl, you were at my house and we'd searched top to bottom through that entire bathroom. Like, what are you even talking about? And I send her the duplicates. I send her a photo of both of them together. And she's like, I don't understand. Someone put the makeup products that were stolen back in my bathroom. She's like, Oh my gosh, how did that even happen? And I'm like, girl, I don't know. But since New Year's, you're the only person that's been in my house, besides my mom, to take care of Paris downstairs. Well, I don't know what you're trying to say, but I definitely didn't steal them. No one else has been in my house. So unless like a ghost wandered into my house and put the makeup products back where they were stolen, I don't understand. And she's just like, well, I would never steal from you. Like I would never do that. So like, it definitely wasn't me. I don't understand. And starts getting like really defensive and like messy. So then I was like, well, did you bring anyone else to my house? Like I, you know, I want to trust you. And she's like, no, no one came to my house. Absolutely. It was just me. I stayed downstairs the whole time. Then I'm like, Ooh, I start getting fired up. And I'm like, listen, Carrie, I love you. <laughs> I don't, but like, so then I start like all these things that I bottled up were finally exploding. First day that I was gone in New York, I told you don't go up into my bedroom. And she's like, oh, that was another time. You're getting confused with another time that I was like at your house. I think I would remember cleaning up the poop from that New York trip. Like I know what week that was. I remember that. I was the only person up in your room. Like I just wanted to hang out with Paris in your room. Like saying stupid, like she's getting messy at this point. Okay. I, I'm not even mad. Like I don't care. I just don't like being lied to. If you or Taylor stole my products and put them back, that's what it looks like happened. I just want to let you know that I'm upset about it. I'm upset about a cat pooping and peeing all over my house because like I told you to close those doors. I'm upset about my furniture being broken. In, but like, you know, all I want you to do is just like admit to it out of respect for me, you know? And she was just kind of like, oh, well, like I definitely didn't steal it. But like, you know, like I, like I talked to Taylor and like she said that she didn't steal it. So like, I don't know like what to tell you. And in that moment, I just kind of was like, you know what? This person's crazy. I don't need to associate myself with this person anymore. I'm O-U-T out. Mind you, this was all in the span of literally like a two week winter break period. I'm done with this. I'm done with the drama. Hold the drama, I'm out. That's kind of how I ended things at the time. Thank God winter break was over because I could go back to my normal life. All my friends and I could just talk about how crazy that whole week was and that whole experience in my life and everything can go back to normal, which it did. It really did until Carrie entered again. So yeah, that's basically how I cut ties with a scam artist, compulsive liar. I brought her back for one more round and I realized how stupid I was. I thought I cut ties with her, stole all of our money and fled the country, scammed us all. And that's gonna have to be for part two. If you guys want that video and you guys wanna know, give this video a big thumbs up. Life's been good since that situation ended. Moral of the story, if you have a friend in your life that you are literally going through like dumb stuff with like this, get out, be lonely, have no friends, do whatever you have to do. And the second someone is in your life and you feel like you're getting roped into unnecessary stress and drama, you need to exit. I learned that this situation and I learned it with some other situations in my life. I can't say that I'm perfect at it, but I always go back to these experiences when I deal with someone entering my life and I can make the decision a lot quicker. If you're struggling with any of this, please send me DMs and just vent to me because just get it off your chest, let it out. We're all dealing with some crazy people out there. And at the end of the day, we're probably the crazy people in someone else's story. So that's just life. Just don't be a compulsive liar. That's it, I'm out. <laughs> so that is this video. This is the story that I've been holding on to for many, many years. Yeah, I hope that none of you guys are dealing with this. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this story time. And I hope that, I don't know, it inspired you to look at your friendships under a new lamp and keep the good ones and kick the bad ones out. If you guys like this video, give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below a good story about a good friend that you have. Comment down below something that your friend has done that is not psycho, because there are good friends out there. You just gotta find them. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Head over to my blog channel to see what I've been up to the past couple of weeks. And yeah, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Let's say if this video gets 100,000 likes, I'll do part two, if you wanna know how I got scammed by the same person, how I allowed myself to fall into this trap again. I love you guys so much. Have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and an amazing year, and I love you guys, and I'll see you guys next week.
I spent some time Give it up cause she's on my mind